Well, I'm up at Piddock Mansion, and it's just a little bit chilly here and a little snow, but we're talking about climbing roses. I'm with Rachel, and so, Rachel, you're usually at the Rose Garden at Washington mm -hmm. Park, but we're up here at Piddock to learn about um, climbers, not just that you know how to do hybrid teas, like we always talk about. So how is this so different than a hybrid tea shrub, more shrubby? Um, yeah, so it's a little tricky. You know, they're called climbing roses, but I always <laughs> joke they're called flapping roses because <laughs> they need a little bit of help to climb. So the same rule applies to the hybrid teas in the sense we're taking out the diseased, we're taking out the really thin canes. Um, but one thing we have to remember for um, climbing roses is apical dominance. So you're going to have blooms on the lateral branches. Mm, you mm -hmm. have, you know, one main cane uh -huh. and any sort of lateral branch is where we're going to produce the branch. So we're going to try to promote as many laterals as we can. And then so we're going to promote this vertically and, and I'm just going to kind of show you an example of what I'm going to take out. Sure. You know, this looks a little good, but this is, you know, this is very old. It's really not going to produce that. Okay, so that we're going to take blooms. that one so out. So we're going to take that out. And by taking it out, we're going to be able to see a little bit better what's going what's on. going on so and so do you think that you have to look down the road with climbers more so than a hybrid tea uh, absolutely with with climbing roses you really have to be thinking about next year okay for example we have this um let, let me cut this out so you can see it a little bit better okay, that's old yeah so you can see this new nice new cane mm -hmm. it's beautiful. coming in that's been um you know that was there from last year so and it's just going to have like a newer growth and we're going to promote those laterals but knowing in um with the season to come you're going to be checking around the base looking okay for the next nice healthy cane that you're going to promote um, you know what how you're going to train okay what do you think about this one here because it looks like it's pretty old yeah so this one's pretty old but um you know we really don't have too many replacements so what i'm actually going to do is i'm just going to cut it a little bit so i'm going to cut okay. that there and i'm actually going to cut you know actually i see a little bit of a bore oh, damage so yeah. i'm actually going to cut that down a little bit more okay. See it clean. There oh, we go. Clean. Now we have a okay. nice, clean, healthy. And then by cutting this, we still have the lateral. Okay. Um, we still have the laterals that will promote the the bloom. So you're just kind of going to kind of create this main cane and then the laterals off of it. All right. And this is kind of interesting that it's in an obelisk. It's a climber. It's not on a trellis. Not on an arbor. In a perennial border. Absolutely. So. Um, the, as I said, the laterals are where the promote, they're going to bloom. So you have down here, you really aren't going to have too much bloom. So what we have is we actually have some roses, we have some perennials in front of it to create that bloom. So when you see the blooms up at the top, you're just looking at, you know, a whole different depths of blooms. Right. And you have a different style on a fence. So let's go across there and teach us how to prune that one. Absolutely. So this style of climber is totally different than the one we saw in the perennial bed. So what, what do you want to do here? Um, so this is actually going to take more of an espalier effect. Um, this is going to create a wall of roses versus we have all the, the blooms up at the top. So kind of a different animal here, like you said. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as we said um, before, you know, take out all that old disease and damaged okay. um, um, wood. So as you can see, this one's looking yeah, that's a old. little bit dicey mm -hmm. here. You know, we have the gray, you know, versus that nice new green. And so I'm going to take that out knowing that this one right here is actually going to replace it. Remember how I said always be thinking about what's going to be replacing it next year. So I'm actually just going to saw this. Well, that was pretty easy. That's yeah. a nice sharp saw. Yeah, exactly. We're just going to have a few offshoots you just have to take off. Right. But another thing, that once we, we'll get this out of the way. Okay. Oh, man, what a monster. Well, that was a big oh, one. <laughs> but you can see that this Organic is going to be. Organic barbed wire. <laughs> this is going to be nice and fresh for this season. That's going to be great. Absolutely. And so, once again, we're going to promote the laterals. So, um, this is, I'm actually going to take off just because it's just a little tip to, um, crowded so I'm going to take this one off. And would you rather have it more um, two-dimensional? You don't want it coming out to these little shrub roses too? Yeah I'm actually going to try, what, the goal is to put it up against the wall. Okay. Create a wall of it, mm -hmm. and we have some jute that we can just tie it up at the end. Perfect. So once I get this cut, see a little bit better about what I'm going to do to the horizontals. And Rachel, it's March now, so we could have done this in the fall, but it's really not too late to do it now. It's, yeah, it's not too late to do this. I would recommend doing it. Like when you're doing your wind pruning, start okay. working on your um, start working on your climbers as well. Well, we're going to have Rachel do her pruning, and because it's so hard to talk while she's pruning, and we'll meet her back in just a minute.
Well, Rachel, you really were aggressive when you took off this plant material, so you really want to head back all of these laterals, is that right? Absolutely, um, and that just creates kind of a neater look. Um, and once again, the blooms are becoming from the lateral from last year's growth. So just kind of cleaning them up a little bit. It's kind of good to keep them uniform in size just because it just makes for a better shape. And then another thing to think about is, you know, you have all this, you know, it's a flopping rose, not a climbing rose as we <laughs> established. So you're really going to have to train it yourself. And what better use for it than, than jute here? So um, as you know, I'm trying to per train this long it's cane flat. up against the wall, kind of make a wall of blooms. And so in order to do that, I had this jute just to kind of hold it back a little bit. And then at the very end, what I would do is just push it all I'd back. take one big um, thing of jute and just kind of train the entire um, rose into right it. Right against so it. So that way you have these little ones that can't quite reach the back, can still be pulled back and won't go, you know, you know, knocking someone out or something. Well, really, this has been so informative. Thank you so much for all these tips. Really? Yeah. And if you have these at your house, you could try that and really get them against a fence, which is something different for a rose, or come up to the Piddock Mansion and see exactly what we did here. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.